All right, so we're gonna learn how to calculate the pH of strong acids and strong bases. Uh, before we can do that, we need to learn some prerequisite stuff like um, auto ionization of water, Kw of water, how to calculate conjugate acid base pairs given some information. And lastly, we can use all of that together um, to calculate pH of strong acid and strong base. All right, so let's start with a review of Ka and Kb. We learned this uh, in the previous lesson. Ka and Kb are just the equilibrium constants for acid-base equilibria. If you have an acid in water, okay, this equilibrium will produce hydronium and a conjugate base. And you can write the Ka of that equilibrium uh, with the products divided by the reactants. And if you have a base in water, it is in equilibrium, it will produce hydroxide and a conjugate acid. And you can write the Kb expression of this by taking the products and divide by the reactants. And just a quick review of what Ka and Kb are. <coughs> and also Ka and Kb can determine the strength of the acid and strength of the base. If you have a higher value for these two, that means you have a stronger acid or base compared to a lower value. Okay, so that's just a quick recap. Now also, we learned that water is the most common acid and the most common base. Water can be an acid and a base. It is able to donate a proton or accept a proton. So as a result, water is amphoteric. Water by itself actually undergoes a reaction called Auto ionization. Okay, water doesn't just sit there. Two liquid waters, they can bump into each other if it has the correct orientation and enough kinetic energy. A reaction would occur. One water will take a hydrogen from the other water. As a result, you make one molecule of hydronium and one molecule of hydroxide. Okay, if this happens very rarely. It's not like half of the water is doing this. It happens on very, very rare occasions. But it still happens nevertheless. You know, it's, the occurrence is not zero. And because this is an equilibrium, the hydronium and hydroxide will just bounce right back into form water again. So it, it's an equilibrium. There is an equilibrium constant for this called the Kw. All right? It's called the ion product constant for water. What is Kw? Well, same thing for all the other Ks, products divided by reactants. So products, you have hydronium and hydroxide concentration. Reactants, you have nothing. Okay, liquid waters don't count because they're liquids, so we exclude them. It is just simply the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide. In water, the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide are always equal. It, because when you have two water molecules, they bump into each other, they make one hydroxide and one hydronium, exactly in that ratio. There's no way for a hydroxide to have more than a hydronium or vice versa. So as a result, because H3O and OH are equal, water is neutral. Does that make sense? And uh, some people did some experiments and determine empirically that at SATP, at 25 degrees and 100 kilopascals of pressure, in pure water, okay, the concentration of hydroxide is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. Of course, hydronium would equal hydroxide. They're exactly the same. H3O is equal to OH, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. You could use that to calculate the Kw at SATP. Okay, because we know the formula for this, uh, the ionization of water, Kw, is just the products of the concentration of the hydronium, H3O, and the hydroxide. So you plug this in, you get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 squared, and that is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. This is the Kw value for water at 25 degrees.
Okay, you need to know this number. Um, I think this number is in your data booklet. If it's not, you still need to know it. Okay, this means any solution at SATP will have the products of hydronium and hydroxide always multiply together to equal KW. Right? Look at how KW is derived. It is a product of H3O and OH. This also means that if you were to increase the amount of one of them, the other one would decrease because they must multiply to be a constant. So if one de increases, it must be counteracted by a decrease in the other. If you have a neutral solution, they're equal. Like water, for example. 10 to the negative 7, 10 to the negative 7. They're equal to each other. They cancel out. You're not an acid. You're not a base. If you're acidic, that, that means you have more hydronium, H3O, than hydroxide. Okay, so higher concentration of the acidic molecule than the basic, you're acidic. And vice versa for the base. If you're a basic solution, then of course you have more hydroxide than hydronium. All right, only if they're equal, you have a neutral solution. All right, so let's use this formula to solve a problem. So example one, calculate the hydroxide concentration of a solution in which the hydronium ion is 3.6 times 10 to the negative three mole at SATP. Well, you have this formula. KW is the product of those two. You know what KW is. It's a given, it's a constant. You know the concentration of hydronium. The question tells you so. All you have to do is algebraically isolate for OH, plug in your numbers, and there you have it. It's a very simple question. It's 2.8 times 10 to the negative 12. A little word on the sig figs for this question. Um, it's two sig figs, there's no question about that. But if 3.6 has another digit, let's say it's 3.61, then the answer should have three sig figs because KW is not just 1.0. There are other numbers there, we just rounded to 1.0. KW is in fact 1.000. Uh, we just round it to two decimals because we don't need more. Just know that KW actually is 1.000. It can have four sig figs if you like. So you change the amount of sig figs of KW to match the question. Don't just use 1.0. All right, anyhow, we know about KW, okay? It's the products of hydronium and hydroxide. What is the relationship between Ka, Kb, and KW? If KW is the product of hydronium and hydroxide, and Ka and Kb has something to do with acid base, which is hydronium and hydroxide, so there's gotta be a relationship, right? Okay, so consider this. Uh, consider the acid equilibrium. HA, the generic acid, plus water. You, you donate that proton, you have hydronium and the conjugate base. If you write the Ka, you have the hydronium times A minus over H A, right? Product over reaction, no problem there. Now from here, you, you look at that A minus right there. That is the conjugate base. The conjugate base is a base. You scoop that up, and if you dissolve that in water, so take the conjugate base, A minus, and you put that in water. That's the second equation, so A minus plus H2O, you have an equilibrium because the A minus is a base, is going to seek to get a proton from somebody. It's going to take a proton from water and you will produce OH and the conjugate acid again. So this is a basic reaction because it produces hydroxide. So you can find the KB of this, which is the OH times HA divided by A minus. Okay, so you can find the KA of the HA KB of the A, and you would get to these two equations. Why are we doing this? You'll see. If you take those two balanced equations, you add them up. When we learned Hess's law, we learned how to add up equations, right? You can cancel both sides. HA cancels with HA. Oh, look, it cancels with A. You can add up the two waters because they're on the same side. So you would get 
2H2O equilibrium hydronium plus hydroxide. Does that look familiar? What is that? Oh well, look, it's the auto ionization of water. It's the exact same thing as the KW expression that we derived from, okay? And if you take the Ka of <coughs> one of the equations, you multiply the Kb, okay, when you combine the formulas, you get, well, the expression that gets you Kw. So if you multiply the K and the Kb, what should you get? If you multiply them algebraically, things will cancel. The A cancels with the A because you multiply and divide by the same thing. Oh, look, HA cancels with HA. KAKB is just hydronium times hydroxide. But wait, hydronium times hydroxide. Where have we seen that before? KW. So this is equal to KW. So we have derived this equation here. KA times KB is equal to KW. Okay, do we have any questions? Did you see that red text? KA, KB is equal to KW. However, this is only true if KA and KB are conjugate acid base pairs. You see how we derive this? We add up two equations together, but those two equations are not random equations. They're not strangers. Okay. They are conjugate acid base pairs, HA and A. A is the conjugate base of HA. HA is the conjugate acid of A. Okay, they're conjugate acid base pairs. This only works if they're conjugate acid base pairs. You can't just randomly grab an acid and a base, add them together, and expect to get KW. It doesn't work that way. Okay, I can't stress this enough. Very common mistake. I can say this 20 times. I guarantee somebody's going to make that mistake on the test. Okay, conjugate acid base pairs. So we're on this topic. If you take a look at this, on top, the first three, I chose three strong acids. There are six. I don't have room for all six. I just chose three as a representative. Those three are 100% ionized in water. Does that make sense? That's what makes them strong. They get rid of the hydrogen, and they never want them back. It doesn't go in the reverse direction, so they will not take back a hydrogen. It is like Asian parents. For Asians, you have four options, really. Doctor, engineer, lawyer, or disgrace. I happen to be a disgrace. You get disowned by your parents if you're not a doctor. You never come back. Okay, so basically that's what happened to the hydrogen. You donate that hydrogen away, don't come back. And so you end up with the conjugate base, right? Conjugate base. I use the word base very loosely here. Are you really a base if you refuse to take a hydrogen? Because look, they will never come back. You get rid of the hydrogen, I don't want to see you again. I don't want to see any hydrogen. So they'll never take a hydrogen. Are they really bases then? No. Okay, they, they are not bases. They do not behave like a base. Just because they're derived from a strong acid, it's a conjugate base of a strong acid, doesn't make it a real base. These are not bases. These are spectators. They do nothing. They sit there. Is that clear, guys? The conjugate base of strong acids are not real bases. They don't have any basic properties. All right, so what about weak acids? Well, in the middle, you have a whole slew of weak acids, and the strength of the weak acid increase as you go higher. Well, if you have a weak acid, you will get rid of your proton, but it'll come back. Okay. It's an equilibrium, right? So you are able to accept a proton after you lose it. So the conjugate base are actually bases. They are real bases because they do have basic properties. And the stronger the acid, the weaker is conjugate base. If you're really good at getting rid of a proton, then that means you can prevent them from coming back also very effectively. So you suck at taking protons. You're a weak base. And if you suck at giving away protons, then you're very good at taking them, vice versa, right? So a weak acid will have a relatively strong conjugate base, and a really strong weak acid will have a relatively weak conjugate base. And it goes in opposite directions. Finally, 
NH3 does not react with water as an acid at all. Why? Because this conjugate acid, oh, sorry, this conjugate base, NH2, is a strong base. I never mentioned this before, but NH2 is a strong base. It will 100% uh, be protonated in water. It will always rip a proton from water to make NH3 100% of the time. I will never give that up. Okay, never gonna let you up, never gonna, whatever. Never gonna go around and desert you, whatever that song is. I will never desert that hydrogen. It's mine. So you try to take a hydrogen, you're not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So NH3, the conjugate acid, will never donate a hydrogen. So you're not really an acid if you re refuse to donate a hydrogen. Does that make sense? So you're not an acid. The conjugate acid of a strong base is not really an acid. It does not have a certain properties. In fact, NH3 is a weak base. It will, in fact, get another hydrogen, so it's not an acid. So I just want to be clear about that. So on this page, I have the text version of what I said. A strong acid have con conjugate bases that are so weak that they're not real bases. And conjugate bases have conjugate acids that are so weak that they don't behave like acids or not a real acid. Weak acid, the stronger the weak acid, the weaker the conjugate base. And for weak base, the stronger the weak base, the weaker the conjugate acid. Okay? And if you multiply together the Ka and Kb of conjugate pairs, you get Kw. So that equation that I talked about, Ka, Kb equals to Kw, that is not very precise. This is a more accurate way of writing this. Ka of what? Ha times Kb of what? A, conjugate after base pairs. Only if you multiply conjugate after base pairs, the K and the Kb, will you get Kw. Right? Did I make that point clear? Only works for conjugate acid base pair. Okay, example two. The hydrogen phosphate ion, HPO4 2 minus, has a Ka of 1.3 times 10 to the negative 13 at SATP. What is the base ionization constant Kb for the phosphate ions? Phosphate is PO3. Notice that this is the conjugate base of HPO3. So how do you do this? It's a very, very simple question. We just learned this formula. Kw is Ka of the acid times Kb of its conjugate base. Isolate for what you need, which is Kb, so you move the Ka over, so now you have Kw over Ka. You whip out your table. The Kw is a constant, you should know that constant. Ka of HPO4, I don't think anyone knows that off the top of their head. You check on the table, it's 1.3 times, uh, well actually this one tells you, you don't have to look on the table. If it doesn't, you can still do it, look on the table. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 13. You do the division, and boom, you have 7.7 times 10 to the negative 2. That's the KB of PO4, 3 minus. Okay, is that clear, guys? That's how you apply the formula to solve problems. If you have the K of an answer, what is the KB of its conjugate base? Okay. So here's example 3. SO, HSO3 is esoteric, meaning that it can both be an acid or a base. Okay, it can have a K and a KB because it is an acid and a base. So determine the K and KB of HSO3 at SATP. I'll give you a chance to do this. You're going to need your data booklet because this doesn't give you any numbers, so look on your own. I'll give you uh, around two minutes and then I'll take this up. We'll give you the K and the KB. Okay, so um, example three, you have HSO3, okay, amphoteric. You have to find the K and the KB. So let's first find the K, Ka. To find the Ka, all you need is a pair of eyes. Look on the table. 
It's right there. You whip out the table. And then you realize, wait, there, there's two HSO3s on the table. Which one do I go for? Well, because we're finding the Ka, so HSO3 in this case is an acid. Only acids have Ka. You look under the acid column. You find HSO3. There it is. Not the base column. Okay, if it appears in the conjugate base formula, that is not the K of that thing. It's the K of whatever's in the acid column. So pick the one in the acid column, and it is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, so there we go. That is Ka. Very simple. Look on the table, copy it down. Everybody can do that. It gets tricky when we solve for Kb. You don't have a Kb table, okay, because you don't need one. You can calculate Kb from the Ka. So remember this formula, uh, Ka, Kb is Kw, so if you want to solve for Kb, well, the Ka we just found to be 6.3 times since a negative 8. The Kw is a constant given to us. So you do the division. And you have Kb equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7. So you solved the problem. You found Ka and a Kb. Okay. Do we have any questions? Please. Really, no questions? You don't see anything wrong? Oh boy. See, I told you, you're gonna screw up. How many times did I stress a certain thing? And I ask you, don't make that mistake. Okay, now that I told you this is wrong, what's wrong? You know what, here is what I did. I'm saying that this is wrong. What did I do wrong? Is it not conjugate base pairs? Yes, thank you, thank you. That, that's the mistake right there. See, I stress many times, this formula works only for conjugate acid base pairs. This isn't conjugate acid base pairs. It's the same compound. It's fall for that trip. Uh, don't fall for that trick. If you have that base. Look for the conjugate acid on your table. H2SO3, the Ka for that is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 2. You sub that in. The Kb of HSO3 should be 7.1 times 10 to the negative 13. That is the answer. All right. Nobody stopped me. Nobody called me out when I asked you, do you have any question? They're like, no, this is fine. See, that's worrisome. Please don't tell me y'all made that mistake. If you did, fine, don't do that again. Okay, I went out of my way to make a mistake just to show you that this is a mistake because this is very common. True story of once there was a student on a test doing a similar question. She made this mistake and she, she realized something was wrong because the K and the KB, she got the same value. That means it should be a neutral solution. She knows for a fact that this is not a neutral solution. So she raised her hand like, is there something wrong with the question? I looked, nope, nothing wrong with the question. I can't tell her what, it, what she did wrong. She did this wrong. She used the same number. Please, only for conjugate acid base pairs, okay? I stress this again, don't make this mistake on the test. It's okay to make it now, get it out of your system, get it right next time. Okay, we're good? All right, so finally, we're at the stage where we can calculate pH. We learned pH in grade 10, the potential for hydrogen. Okay, we, we talked about what it is, what it means, but we never learned how to calculate it. That's a grade 12 math because you need log. pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. And pOH 
yeah, there's something called pOH, is the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide. Okay, why have you never heard of pOH? Because it's redundant. We have pH, that's good enough. We don't need two sets of the same things. Okay, they're not literally the same, but they tell you the same things. You need log to solve for the pH. So I hope you guys remember the rules of log. And it's, um, it's not natural to take advanced functions if you're taking chemistry. Otherwise, if you just have chemistry, you're not gonna do anything with that in university. You're gonna need math. So you probably all took advanced functions. Just try to remember log rules. Why do we use log? Because in grade 10, we told you that the pH scale is logarithmic. It means that a change of one on the scale means a tenfold change in ion concentration. For example, uh, something with a pH of five. It has 100 times more H3O than a solution of pH seven. It's 100 times more acidic. Why? Because it's a change of two. And it's two orders of magnitude 100 times more acidic. Similarly, a pH of 13 is 100,000 times more basic or less H3O than a solution of pH 8. Okay, again, logarithmic scale. It's not a linear scale. So that's why you have log for both equations. Um, you can have a pH scale, okay? And you can have a pOH scale. They're pretty much the same thing, except one, you look at it from the perspective of H3O, and the other one you look at from the perspective of OH. So if you have an acidic solution, acids will increase the H3O. It lowers the pH. Okay, basic solutions, it will decrease H3O and increase hydroxide, which raises the pH. So we're familiar with pH. If the pH of one, then you have a really low pH, very acidic. A pH of 14, very high pH, basic. But pOH is the opposite. If you have a pOH of 14, you're very acidic. Okay, and a pOH of one means you're very basic. You know what I mean? They're basically the same scale. Um, that's why we never use pOH, just use pH. What about pure water? Okay, recall, at 25 degrees, pure water has a hydronium concentration of 10 to the negative seven, and a hydroxide concentration of also 10 to the negative seven. So what is the pH of pure water? Okay, we all know the answer, but how do we get that answer? Use the formula. So pH is negative log of hydronium, cool, negative log of 10 to the negative seven, uh, you don't even need a calculator for this. You can do this in your head um, using log rules. You can drop the exponent, negative 7, outside. The negative 7 and the negative cancel to become positive 7, and boom. This is 7, exactly. The pH of pure water is 7, as you know, verified by real life. We all know that it's 7. So this formula works. How do we get the pH of water? Because of the auto-ionization of water. Does that make sense? You can calculate the pOH of water. Same, same thing. Um, pOH is negative log of OH, and the OH of pure water is, again, 10 to the negative 7. And the pOH is also 7. Okay, do we have any questions? All right, sweet. What is the relationship? between pH and pOH. Okay, we know they tell the same story from a different perspective, but there's a relation. Can you convert between one to the other? Yes, you can. Let's derive a formula. So here is the KW equation, the KW equilibrium. If you take the negative log of both sides, okay, you're, and you're allowed to do that, you get this. In, the, in, in mathematics, you can do whatever you want to the equation as long as you do it to the other side. So I took the negative log of both sides here. And recall rules of logarithm. Log of AB is the same as log A plus log B. So I could separate the two logs on the left side. So now I have minus log hydronium plus minus log 
hydroxide equals to negative log of Kw that I didn't change. What is negative log of H3O? Like that's the pH. We just talked about the formula for the pH. What is negative log of OH? Well, that's the pOH. And what's Kw? Kw is 10 to the negative 14, and we know that from empirical data. So let's plug in all of this into our equation. So that becomes pH plus pOH equals to negative log of Kw, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If you simplify the right side, you just get 14. So this is basically saying pH plus pOH is exactly 14. Have you ever wondered why the pH scale goes from 0 to 14 and not any other random number? Why 14? Why not 10? A, a, a 0 to 10 scale makes intuitive sense to us. We do that all the time. And why not 0 to 100? Right? We use marks, uh, grades from 0 to 100, right? Why 14? That's a weird number. It's not a choice. Okay, we discovered that at 25 degrees, we have 10 to the negative 7 for hydronium and hydroxide concentration for water. That is a fact of nature. We didn't invent that. And then they multiply together to get Kw. Again, it is a constant of nature. We didn't come up with it. We found it. So because of that, we have to use a pH scale that goes from 0 to 14 because of this. pH plus pOH is 14. All right. Now, for the sig figs, you might be thinking, wait, hold up. The 1.0 log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, that has two sig figs. So how come your pH has four sig figs? It doesn't. It only has two sig figs. The decimals in the pH value are the only significant figures. The number that comes before the decimal doesn't count because it's not a real number. That is a logarithmic number. Okay, logarithmic numbers are exponents, not numbers. So those are placeholders for the decimal. This is telling you this is raised to the uh, 14th power. All right, we derive the actual number, the concentration that has two sig figs with the log. You take the log of that, because 1.0 has two sig figs, you will have two decimal places in your pH. Those are the significant figures for pH. Okay. For example, if you have a pH of 6.85, like in, the, uh, in that uh, PowerPoint, the 8.5, the decimal, are the only sig figs. That's two sig figs. Did I make this all clear? If your concentration has two sig figs, you have two decimals. If your concentration has three sig figs, you have three decimals. All right, let's do some math with pH. So water taken from a lake was found to have a hydronium concentration of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter. Calculate the pH and the pOH of the lake water. Okay, you need the pH and the pOH. I'll walk you through this once, and then I'll have you do the rest. First, you need to calculate pH. Here's the pH formula. pH is negative log hydronium. What is hydronium? Well, it's given to you right there, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5. You put that in, you whip out your calculator, and you get 4.49. Two sig figs, because the uh, concentration of H3O has two sig figs, three and the two. So your pH should have two sig figs. That means two decimals. And you can calculate the pOH just by subtracting from 14, the pH. You can do it in another way. You can calculate the OH concentration using Kw by dividing and take the negative log of that, but that's too much work. This is way easier. Just subtract from 14, and that should give you 9.51. So the pH is 4.49. The pOH is 9.51, two sig figs each. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so I have a few examples from example five to example nine. Please work on them um, all together, and then I'll take them up in like five minutes. 
they're all fairly straightforward. There are some questions with little twists. Uh, just be careful. And then I'll take them up in five. All right, so let's start with example five. You have to determine the pH of 0 0.0026 molar sodium hydroxide. You have to find the pH of a base, okay? And um, sodium hydroxide being a strong base, it will 100% ionize. Everything in this lesson is strong. That means OH is equal to NaOH because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, which is also 0 0.0026. You can calculate the pH from the pOH, and then you can calculate the OH, uh, pOH from the OH. So you can calculate pOH using the hydroxide concentration by taking negative log, and then you subtract that from 14 to get the pH. The two negatives um, cancel to positive. So now you can just sub in the hydroxide concentration, 14 plus log, 0 0.0026, and that should give you 11.41. Two sig figs, two decimals. Now you can double check, um, just to see whether you did this right. It's a really quick way of checking. This is sodium hydroxide we're talking about, which is a base, okay? So a base should have a high pH. What did you get? Well, you got 11, that's quite high. So the answer does make logical sense. So you can you know, rest easy. If you get like five, then you know you got it wrong because sodium hydroxide cannot have a pH of five. Okay, hey, six. Determine the pH of 0 0.050 molar HCl solution. And HCl is a strong acid. So this is easier than example five. You're finding a pH, uh, the pH of a strong acid. A strong acid 100% ionizes. So the amount of H3O you make will exactly equal to the amount of HCl because they all reacted to make H3O. So it's the same thing, 0 0.050. All right, so negative log of hydronium. You put this in your calculator and there you have it, 1.3. Two six fix, so two decimals. Does that make logical sense? Well, this is HCl, so yes, this does make sense. HCl has low pH because it's highly acidic. All right, so question seven, you have strontium hydroxide. So what is the pH of 0.017 molar strontium hydroxide? You need to know the concentration of OH. And strontium hydroxide is a strong base. It will dissociate 100%. You will have two hydroxides for every one strontium. So you need to multiply the strontium hydroxide concentration by two. Okay. So you get 0.034 molar. That's the amount of hydroxide you have because for every one strong team, you get two hydroxides. So now it's the same thing as the, uh, the uh, example five. pH is 14 minus pOH, which is 14 minus the negative log of hydroxide. You can now substitute hydroxide in. So 14 plus log of OH, and you calculate to be 12.53. So two sig figs, two decimals. Does that make sense logically? Well, strong steam hydroxide is a strong base. This is high pH, so it makes sense. All right, so far so good. All right, so example eight, you have ethanoic acid. The pH is 5.3. What is the concentration of hydronium ion in the solution? So this one is interesting. You have the pH, but you don't have the ion concentration. So you gotta work backwards here. Here is where math skills come in. Okay, this is why learning log and advanced functions can really help. You have to recall log rules. How do you go from this to isolate for pH? Well, first of all, you move the negative over. So you have log of the hydronium equals to negative pH. Okay so, okay, so how do I solve for the hydronium concentration? How do I move the log over? So I'll recall this, log base B of A is equal to A. Sorry, log base B of X is equal to A. So therefore X is equal to B to the power of A. That is a log rule that you just need to know. 
if you forget, so I just reminded you. So that means uh, you can move the log over to the other side. You have 10 to the negative pH. By the way, log has a default base of 10 if you don't see a number. Okay, log without a little number on the bottom, and the default is 10. So you don't have to write 10. So that's why it's 10 to the power of negative pH, not any other number. Okay, so what is pH? Well, that is 5.30. You whip out a calculator, and you're gonna need a calculator for that one. 10 to the negative, 5.30. You get 5.0 times 10 to the negative six moles per liter. Sig figs, well, pH has two decimals, so your concentration should have two sig figs, so 5.0. Okay, any questions about this? All right, last one, example nine. A solution of aniline has a pH of 8.15. Determine the concentration of hydroxide in the solution. You're given pH this time, you're asked to solve for hydroxide ion concentration. Same strategy, pOH is the negative log of OH, because aniline is a base, you need to calculate hydroxide. And um, we can <coughs> arrive at this. Hydroxide ion concentration, that's what we want to solve, it is equal to 10 to the negative pOH, okay? What is 10 to the negative pOH? What is pOH? Well, pOH is 14 minus the pH. So you sub that in. Don't forget the brackets, okay? I'm teaching bed math in grade 12. If you forget the brackets, you know, it, it's gonna be wrong. So it's bracket with the negative outside, 14 minus pH. pH is 8.15, you can sub that in. You put this in your calculator, you should get 1.4 times 10 to the negative six mole per liter. And that is the concentration of hydroxide ions. Okay, two sig figs because two decimal places. So are we clear on how to calculate pH and pOH of strong acid and strong base? This is it. We learn auto ionization of water. Uh, we learned what KW is. We learned the relationship between Ka, Kb, and Kw. They must be conjugate as base pairs. They multiply to Kw. Okay, and also, we learned how to calculate the pH using the negative log of hydronium and pOH using the negative log of hydroxide. Also, pH plus pOH is 14. That's it. Any questions? Um, for the six quick sections, by the example nine, we have like two sig figs, but it's only one decimal place there. Example nine. There are two decimals, 8.15. So it's two sig figs, 1.4. Oh, but like the last answer, like 1.4? Yeah, but that is not pH, that is concentration. So it is regular rules. They both count. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Can I ask a question about the lab? Sure. Um, 